Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new on this channel, please do subscribe and press the bell icon for latest video update. Today I will design a 3 phase 3 level flying capacitor model which is one of the most popular conventional topologies that is used for inverter operation. So at first I would like to tell you that there are two types of configuration is possible. One is symmetrical configuration and another one is the asymmetrical configuration. There are two types of configuration is shown on the screen and this is for a 5 level configuration. So what is the difference between symmetrical and asymmetrical configuration? In symmetrical configuration, the voltage rating of each capacitor is same. For a M level converter requires total of M-1 into M-2 all divided by two auxiliary capacitors per phase leg and M-1 number of main DC bus capacitors. But for asymmetrical configuration, the main point is the different voltage rating of capacitors and the corresponding voltage balancing. That means in case of asymmetrical configuration, there is no thumb rule that to select the voltage rating of a capacitors and also the number of capacitors. So we will go for symmetrical configuration. So here on the screen, a one leg of three phase three level flying capacitor model is shown to you and the corresponding switching table is shown on the right hand side. So here you can see for three level output voltage generation, there are four switching states is possible. The first one is the positive VDC by 2 that is when the switch S1 and switch S2 will conduct we will get the positive VDC by 2 at the output end when switch S3 and S4 will conduct we will get minus VDC by 2 at the output end and for zero level there are two switching states that's possible only for flying capacitor these two states are possible because one is used for charging of the capacitor and the another one is used for the discharging of the capacitor. So first one is the charging state and second one is the discharging state. So all the configuration you have seen on the screen. So here the main thing is to generate PWM signal for the switches and also balance the capacitor voltage to a reference value that is VDC by 2. And from the circuit operation you can easily understand that the zero level we are getting from the capacitor voltage clamping method. So first of all, let's generate the PWM or the three level timings using phase disposition PWM technique. I have already discussed the technique in my three level inverter video. If you need any further explanation on phase disposition PWM technique, then comment below. I will cover a separate video depends on your feedback.
this is named as PWM3 for which we are getting positive VDC voltage level and which is normally goes to the positive switches like S1 and S2 which is used for positive level generation according to our switching table. Similarly this one is for PWM2 or which is stands for zero voltage level generation. So this is the level where the capacitor is being used for voltage clamping and the capacitor voltage is balanced with the reference value that is VDC by 2. So this is the only possible level where the capacitor is used and the last one named as PWM1 which is used for negative voltage level generation that is minus VDC by 2. These PWMs are the timings of the different levels or you can say the time allocation for different levels which is given to the switches. This is mainly phase disposition PWM switching technique but we will give all the switching time to the switches after generating the voltage balance logic of the capacitor. So here the main thing is how to balance the flying capacitor. So to balance the voltage of flying capacitor a power signal is used and the power signal is generated by the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the capacitor and according to the value of the power signal the voltage states are going to be chosen. The balancing of the capacitor needs equal duration of charging and discharging cycle. For the balancing of the capacitor the voltage should not vary from the desired value and the developed logic can be expressed mathematically you can see on the screen. So before the generation of power signal let's design the inverter first. At first I just design for one leg and for three phase output there we need three legs which are similar to each other. So let's do it first. 